The Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, which was set up in 2000 by the administration of President Robasanjo to fast-track development in the oil-rich Niger Delta region, has been accused by the Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Gotswila Lakwabiu, of being used as a major rallying point for corrupt officials. The minister said the NDDC has been has 12,000 abandoned projects across the nine states of the Niger Delta. Still with me in the studio is legal practitioner Obi Adjebo. Thank you very much for staying with us. We actually teased on this earlier, and that's the comments by the Minister of Niger Delta. People using the NDDC as an ATM uh, for their own uh, intention, not looking at it as an, you know, an, an intervention or interventionist uh, agency. To what extent do you agree or disagree with this position and why? Earlier on, I said it's not a question of agreeing or disagreeing. We have to go back to the history. Why was NDDC set up? It was because of the cry of the people that they're being marginalized. They are the cash cow. They are the, the golden cow that lays all the goose. So they should get more. They should be looked into. They should be, they should be cared for. They should not be um, taken care of as... as um, they should be a special zone. That was why it came. And so for some people, it meant their government is giving us money to share. So you see, in that respect, it is a cash, it is an ATM. On the other respect, the aim of government was to, to do some other things that the state governments, the funds for the state governments could not meet up, like build bridges in Bay Bayelsa is so, is so swampy that big bridges interconnect um, communities and do things for all these um, for all these uh, neighborhoods so that the government does not see it as an atf but it became an atf because we have we have rules and regulations which we don't ever obey in nigeria corruption that's one of the things that um Co mentioned from bloating contract to employing people who are not skilled in a particular area to do the jobs in that area. Um, do you think that is um, one of the reasons that's drawing back the Niger Delta? The Niger Delta, in what I would say is, instead of them starting any new project, they should take, the, you know, before you can get those 12,000 projects to, to a conclusion, it should take about 15, 20 years. Because you have to first locate the man, convince the man that he has to forbid some of the money that he squandered, he don't know what he did, or seize properties. So that, that, that is my opinion. Yes, they've made mistakes, but it's no use crying over the, the mistakes. You, as a minister, should now say, this is, what, this is my reality. What do I do? How do I sort out this my reality and make it be what I want? Uh, let me make, uh, go to the 12,000 projects you mentioned. Yeah. That's according to the Minister of Niger yeah. Delta, that we have 12,000 abandoned, abandoned projects yeah. across the nine states of the Niger Delta region. Does this worry you? Is this a case of people sabotaging themselves? Because from what I understand, most of these projects are given to local contractors. Well, isn't that the typical Nigerian story? We just sabotage ourselves. The, the PID's case should never have happened. But we sabotage ourselves. We feel that if we make small money, we make money, but we forget the consequences of this money we are taking. We forget the consequences that we are shooting ourselves on the toe, on the feet. So that is it. The, the, the use of the local, local contractors is to spread the money so that there'll be rehabilitation. And you know the ripple effect of money, you give somebody a job, a community is awoken, is awoken up because of money. But they saw it as if, yes, government has come to do Sarah, government has come to give them free money, and they decided to squander it. Quite unfortunate if we are to, you know, take what you're saying. But let's look at the amount that was mentioned by Aquabio. He talked about um, people that have contracts, aside from substandard contracts and abandoned contracts by contractors. Before I go to that question, is there a way these contractors can be made 
to complete their work, to standard. Because some of these contracts are awarded, some of them are done shabbily, and these shabbily executed projects are commissioned. Is there a way this can be checkmate? Before I go on to the other you, question. You see, there are, there are ways and means of doing this thing. Before a contract is awarded, you get a bond from the bank which says you are going to do the job. And then after each stage, if you do like one kilometer, before you are paid, um, they come and do it, they test it, uh, engineers come, do quality, and, and as you're working, every, there should be an engineer stationed with you that will check the standard and check the quality and check the durability of the work. Okay. These, these, these corrupt officials we are mentioning, government officials, um, are, they, are they primarily from the Niger Delta, or this is more of a presidential influence? on the affairs of the Niger Delta? Well, um, I hope uh, if it's a presidential influence, I hope it's, also, it's, also, it's not only for Niger Delta. I hope it's all over the Federation because that's not the first place that there's corruption. Corruption is, it, it has eaten into the mere fiber, fiber of the nation and something rad, rad, radical has to be done about it. But if it is the Niger Delta, which is the one that is obvious, the Niger Delta case is, 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 is raising not only a red flag uh, a, a beige, uh, a, and a yellow flag, Ah, I'm corrupt, I'm corrupt. So if it's Niger Delta, they want to start off from fine. But something must be done. This commission has been there for 20-something 20 years. 20 years now. Mm. Would you say, in spite of all the challenges, mm. that the people have had some sort of benefit from its presence in that area? Or is it more of a political tool? Well, um, before I go there, you know the, the government has also set up the North, the Northern um, yeah, North uh, Commission, and I'm waiting for them to set up the Southeast Commission because it has to go around. That's number one. But number two, um, the there there are when Niger Delta started, it had it had beautiful, beautiful reviews things were working roads were being done you would see you would see them commissioner roads especially there was a time to me alive was there i believe and um, then you see them commissioning roads you see them so now what they have to do now is don't release any more money just go back and call them and say draw them by the ear and say look we've got the stick you have to do some work or whatever but something must be done Papi was talking about projects and how it is carried out as part of the solution. Mm. He said sometimes um, a contract that will be properly done mm. with, say, 50 billion, somebody will be um, putting out a contract of 5 billion. And then the time frame for each administration is four years maximum. Mm. So if they go by breaking down the project to 5 million per se, it will now stretch and overlap to the next administration, and that could be uh, a constraint. But if, 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 for instance, the Niger Delta has a project of, say, 50, um, OK, let's say it has a project of 50 billion mm. naira, does the government provide that? Will it go round the states? And is that a better approach to, instead of, cutting down on cost, we should ensure that no cost is spared in getting jobs completely done within the time frame of a particular administration. Look, any, most of the contracts that are being awarded are highly inflated. For, for two thirds of those amounts of, that are being awarded, you can get an international standard job done if we do not have corruption, if we do not have people that have to be paid to do their work. You know, when, when you have a contract, you have imaginary partners. You don't just go there saying that you're going to, you're, you're, you're the only person that will do the job and it's just between you and the minister, no. You have imaginary partners. And it's this imaginary partners that makes the contract to be inflated. Does the commission headquarters, there's something he said about it. We are just located in Botaka tonight. It's in um, a rented building, and they pay um, um, a hundred, uh, about 300 million 
yearly as rent. That building, they've been using it for 20 something years now. Does that worry you? Is that part of the problem? Is that maybe that, that situation should have been addressed a long time before now? You look, when you look at the rental value, I can assure you that, let's say the rent is five million per annum, that one would be 50 million. That is number one. So it is in some parcel of a person's best interest to keep them staying in a rented place than for them to build their permanent structure and save all that money. Because the more you rent, the, the more money you're wasting. And if, let's say you're spending 50 million a year and you, you, you calculate, okay, 50 million over 10 years, how much should this building cost? Let us now divide that 50 million and be doing it every year, 50 million, every year, 50 million. They would have a permanent structure and a befitting permanent structure at that too. The, the president um, commissioned a forensic uh, audit of the NDDC, and this was commended by the minister that it's a good thing. And he wondered why previous administration has not uh, had not thought it necessary to conduct this audit of the agency to know what is actually going on and to reposition it to actually work for the people. What's your thought on this audit that was commissioned by the president and will we see real benefits will it amount to anything because this is not the first time you know we're getting you to see, here you see we, we believe a lot in drama we are so into drama in nigeria that we forget the real nitty-gritty fine do the forensic you don't need to go on air and start making noise i accept if you're telling us you're going to fail Go do the forensic. From the forensic, know what to do. But do something that will benefit the people and the nation as a whole. Because it's all our collective interest that is being squandered there. It's not this money does, does, it doesn't belong to everybody. Because every, every state, every state um, adds something to this post. And it, when, when it's being squandered, it's everybody's money that's being squandered. Your money, my money, everybody's money, everybody's taxes, because our taxes go, except personal taxes, goes to states, but our main taxes go to the federal. So it is our money that is going. So let them stop talking. Let them stop telling us forensic. Yes, a lot of mistake has been made, but please correct it and move, move forward so that we can reap the benefit. We've been talking about uh, Akwabio all the, all for the past uh, 20 minutes mm -hmm. or so, and uh, he's the minister now in charge. What mm -hmm. he has highlighted are most of the challenges that confront the NDDC. Mm -hmm. Now he is taking over. Do you see him replicating those infrastructural feats that he was able to accomplish in a quibum state that people are still actually talking about. I, I was in that state for a few years and I saw some of the things he was able to do. Do you see him replicating such accomplishment across the nine states? That was just one state. Mm. Across the nine states of the Niger Delta. Well, he's a man on remission. And since he's on remission, he has a point to prove. So he, he, it is in his best interest to prove that point. But I sincerely hope he does, does a good job because we need things to move in this nation. We cannot, be, we cannot be singing the same song. We've sang the same song for 59 years. Next year we'll be 60 and we're still singing the same song. 20 plus years we've not gotten a, a befitting headquarters that you know, manages the affairs of the commission. And he is saying that he can accomplish, he will get the president to come and commission a befitting um, um, edifice, so to say, for the NDDC commission. NDDC. He's saying between six and eight months. Is it possible? With money, it's possible. They work 24 hours. They want 24 hours. When, when um, Park View, I was staying behind Park View, and, and they were working 24 hours in Park View. And all of a sudden, Parkview that was desolate now became a beautiful place. 24 hours. Sometimes I, I stroll down there at night and I see workmen with the cranes building houses 24 hours. So with the money NDDC has, they should be able to do, make a lot of difference. They should be able to do it. Final thoughts on the situation in the Niger Delta. Are they still getting the short hand of the gun? Um... It would have been a lot better if they, if they, if they could um, take care of their money and say, this is our money, this is what we want to do with it. But since we are, we are all 
trapped in this, con this federal constitution. And they are, they, they are getting more than most people are getting. So it is for them now to decide what they want to do, which way forward. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't buy the idea that you cannot progress in Nigeria or things are bad. Yes, things may be bad, but that means we should think more. And every, every thinker should be able to move forward in Nigeria. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us on the program. Thank you. It's a pleasure. We'll go on a short break for now for a PLOS package. And when we return, I'll give you my take. Do stay with us. It was a gathering of journalists, social media influencers, and senior personnel from the Nigeria's Army Department of Civil Military Affairs. The aim of the meeting was to form a common front which would have positive effects on national security. The objective of today's meeting is uh, simply to uh, interact with uh, social media bloggers and journalists so that uh, they can, uh, we can form the necessary partnership and they can uh, be partners and collaborate with the army to ensure that uh, we responsibly, that means for responsible, for responsible use of the social media to propagate the right information so that uh, at the end of the day we send out the right message and uh, we influence people positively to support the military and the country generally so that we can achieve peace and security in the country. What, we, what the Nigerian army is doing, the Nigerian army, what they are doing is to see how they can help train, work on the mindset of cyber, cyber warriors, social media influencers to see that whatever they post online and how they post it is very, very key because it can either promote peace and security in Nigeria or it can affect peace and security in Nigeria. Some of those present say fake news is doing more harm than good and affecting military morale. Fake news is very devastating. As a matter of fact, it can, it can crumble a nation within the speed of minutes. It's more dangerous than the fiscal weapons and uh, it's more dangerous in the fact that we are dealing with people we cannot see or with enemies we cannot see, unlike the, the conventional enemies that have a, have a face and have a plan. They want journalists and the Nigerian social media community to form a partnership with the army to combat fake news terrorism and criminality. If you are a soldier out there doing your best or a security man doing your best and you begin to see people spreading wrong information about what you do or they do things to undermine your effort, the tendency is that you'll be discouraged and uh, it will dampen your morale and you will not be in a position to want to give in your best. So I want to appeal to all Nigerians and uh, all uh, uh, responsible citizens of the country to continue to use the internet and social media responsibly so that uh, we can, I'm not saying we must uh, uh, maybe support the military, no, but just spread the right information. If something happens here, say it happened there, don't say it happened elsewhere. If uh, something happens somewhere, uh, say it the way it is and uh, analyze it uh, responsibly. And uh, if you do that, uh, the, tendency is, the tendency is that uh, uh, we will, you influence people positively and uh, you will send the right message out. Nigeria is our country. The military is our army. They are being paid with taxpayers' money. So running down our military, affect uh, saying things that, that negate our national security, you are not doing anybody, but you are doing yourself. Because people at outside Nigeria will judge Nigeria by what they see on your wall, what you post online. So you need to be very careful that whatever you post online can promote peace in Nigeria or can promote trouble in Nigeria and can affect our national security. Amadin Uyi, Plus TV Africa. I understand we cannot live in isolation and trips are a necessary part of the president's responsibility to enhance the country's battered image and attract foreign investment. However, I am more concerned by the denials of the mounting economic distress, infrastructural deficit and the grave security situation at home. This for me demands all of the president's time and he must reduce to the barest minimum trips outside the country. Fact is, the much touted foreign direct investment he seeks are not blind. A safe and conducive environment is key to attracting investors. And who says he cannot go on a vacation at Ubudu Ranch? 
<laughs> Thanks for watching the program tonight. Hope it was time well spent. We'll see you again tomorrow, same time. Until then, please be well.